Hello everyone. Today we will be reviewing hepatic transcatheter arterial chemoembolization, which can be abbreviated to TACE. First, we will start by defining chemoembolization. In 2006, SIR stated it is the infusion of a mixture of chemotherapeutic agents with or without a thanodized ale, followed by embolization with particles such as polyvinyl, alcohol, or gel foam. But how is this delivery actually efficacious? It exploits the dual blood supply of the liver. The liver is supplied both by the portal vein and the hepatic artery. However, hepatic tumors parasitize arterial flow and receive about 90% of their blood flow from hepatic artery. This heavy arterial supplies allows agents to become 40 times more concentrated in the neoplastic tissue rather than over the normal tissue when given intraarterially. To form the actual therapy, there are a variety of chemotherapy drugs that, which can be paired with a variety of embolic agents. Doxyrubicin is the most common drugs, but these will vary widely. Now, when would we use this technique in liver tumors? We are going to treat hypervascular tumors of the livers. These include hepatic cellular carcinoma, cholangiocarcinoma, hepatic metastasis, giant hand hemangiomas, and hepatic epithelioid hemangiendotheliomas. What would be the contraindications we need to keep in mind when performing this procedure? Well, there are no absolute contraindications to the procedure. There are a variety of relative contraindications. And overall, these attempt to estimate the patient's reserve liver capacity. Even follow the most careful procedure the patient will lose some liver function, so we need to be selective about the patients that can tolerate the therapy. The contraindications include substantial tumor involvement, greater than 50%, hepatic insufficiency or failure, portal vein invasion, elevated serum LDH, elevated transaminases, elevated serum bile, and elevated alpha-feta protein. Now to discuss the procedure. First, we need to establish the patient's baseline labs and review the pre-procedural cross-sectional imaging, either CT or MR. On MR, we're looking for hypoattenuating lesions. This patient had diffuse involvement of his right lobe. Access is gained using Seldinger technique, and then the celiac artery is selectively catheterized to assess anatomy, tumor supply, and patency of the portal system. This freeze frame will help identify the important anatomy. Here we see the common hepatic and splenic arteries branching from the celiac trunk. The common hepatic artery then turns into the proper hepatic artery after the gastroduodenal artery branches. Let's take a look at that first run once more because this procedure is dependent on understanding the patient's anatomy. Because the patient had diffuse involvement of his right lobe, the catheter is advanced into the right hepatic artery for delivery of the agents. Before beginning administering the chemotherapy, we need to ensure there is no significant AV shunting, which could lead to non-target embolization. Here, there was shunting, so a bland embolic material was to delivered to slow down the shunt. The delivery of the chemoembolic agents is via short pulses so the engorged tumor arteries are not overwhelmed. As the embolic material begins to take effect, the flow slows down. Now we see reflux back into the catheter, which indicates the end of the procedure. Following the procedure, we need to be aware of the potential complications. First, the most common complication is a self-limiting condition termed post-embolization syndrome. The patient will complain of a constellation of symptoms, 
including fever, nausea and vomiting, and upper right quadrant pain. Some centers attempt to pretreat this condition with intraoperative lidocaine. Biliary injury in, uh, occurs in about 8% of cases and are typically clinically silent. Infection occurs in 4% of patients, most commonly in patients with portal vein obstruction, biliary obstruction, presence of ascites, and biliary enteric anastomoses. Finally, non-target embolization can occur. This can cause gallbladder or splenic ischemia or infarction or acute pancreatitis. In follow-up, we will reassess the patient's liver function via lab testing. Then, at four to eight weeks, we will check the tumor response via repeat imaging. This procedure can be repeated if the response was suboptimal. Thank you for your time. We hope you enjoyed this presentation.